Welcome back. In part two, we've created and styled our beautiful button, a floating action button. And in this part, part three, we're going to add functionality. We're going to make the button actually work and listen to the tap event. We're going to add a tap handler up here. So when we tap on this stack layout, aka the button, we're going to call this on tap function and we're going to pass the event. So I'm going to copy that and create this function right here. Now, who is interested in this tap event? It's not the button itself. It's the owner of the button, which is this app component. So how do we pass this tap event to the app component? Well, in Angular, we're going to emit an event. So that requires a couple things. One is we need an output. So we're going to import that from Angular Core. And we also need an event emitter. So the output is going to be registered with a parent component. And we're going to get back to that in a second. I'm going to create this output property here. I'm going to call it tap. And it's going to be of type event emitter. Right now I'm going to set it to any, but it's actually a gesture event data type. I'll show you that in a moment. So for those uh, that are using TypeScript, which you most likely are if you're using Angular, uh, this will give you a little bit of IntelliSense. Uh, so we're going to initialize this new event emitter here. And when we do the tap, what you want to do is call that emitter and say emit. Okay, and we're going to pass those arguments in. So this is kind of like a pass through scenario. Uh, the tap is going to be detected by our component and it's going to pass the arguments, whatever that event was received here by the on tap handler, to the parent. Let's go ahead and register the tap handler here in the parent. We're going to say tap and we're going to bind it to on tap. And let's go to the code here. We're going to create a public function called on tap here which is going to receive our arguments and print out to the console. Okay, so let's take a look at the console. And when I hit tap, there is our printout tap. So this tap gets printed out by the parent component. Okay, great. So since we're here, we can also create a new property where we bind the text that's displayed inside the button. So we're going to say text equals plus. And in our float button component, we're going to have an input here, which we need to import. And this label, we're going to bind the text property of the label to the text property that's the input. So here, input text, it's going to be a string type. Let's save that and see what happens. Okay, we get that plus. Now, if we go back to the parent component, and we want to change this to something else like a minus. There it is, it's a minus now. Okay, there is a little something that we're missing. See, if we tap this, we're getting the tap printed out here, and we're handling the tap. However, we don't get any visual feedback that we're actually tapping on this button. One way to do that is by animating the color as we're tapping on the button. And that's what we're going to do in the final part four of this tutorial. Stay tuned.